It's your girl, Nella Rose, and welcome to JBL's Orange Box, a show where I invite my friends down to talk about what it's really like to be an artist. So today, guys, not only do we have one of my favorite female artists, we've got the baddest B, the stallion herself. We have got Miss Bo! My babes. Yes, I'm so excited that you're here today, I'm my so sister. I'm so happy to be here with you. Are you ready for me to interrogate you about your life? I'm excited. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so Banks, I want to start from the beginning. Yeah. A little birdie told me that you're actually from a musical family. Yeah. So can you explain that to me, my sister? So my dad's brother was in a gram group back in the day called Essentials. I swear. Yeah, so they were like a big deal. Like There was loads of crews, I guess, from London. There was like More Fire Crew, Roll Deep, BBK. Yeah. But not really much from South representing the culture. And my uncle was a part of that group and they were they were really dope, actually. Yeah. So he taught me a lot about like just UK culture and rap music. I was watching like Risky Road at like 11, 12. That's your age. What yeah. Is that? Crazy. <laughs> um, and yeah, my mum's brother was also like a rapper, artist. He was into a lot of drum and bass. He used to be at a lot of like shows with Did all these you go other to the shows. shows. No, not when I was young, but I've been to a few DMB parties when I got older, but it's not really my vibe anymore. But when I was younger, I was like infatuated with it. So you're from a family of rappers? Yeah. And then you came out to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. And like growing up, what were you like in school? Because I heard you didn't listen. Yeah, I was a tyrant for sure. <laughs> I was naughty. But you know what? I found it hard to focus. I always was interested in things that were more practical. Mm. Like being in class didn't stimulate me whatsoever. So I was just a clown, really? which wasn't the greatest shit. <laughs> I know what you mean. I find it that with creators, they tend to like struggle in school because it's like you're forcing them into a system where it's like academics, 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 exactly. when they have creative minds. Mm -hmm. So that's why sometimes they tend to like mess around and like not do so well because yeah. the babies are creative. I feel like bit, like loads of creators, loads of artists, you talk to them, they're always bad in school. They wasn't focused. I'm like, chai, I think we all had the same problem. So when did you start like your music journey, like properly? I would say when I was like 18. 18? Yeah. I got fired from some job. <laughs> I got fired from my a job. Sister. Genuinely, though, I was like, they fired me, but yeah, anyway. Because so, I didn't go in, but I actually didn't go in because I wasn't well, I wasn't playing. It was it was good because it it pushed me in the right direction and it kick-started my career. My girl was like, you're not getting any younger. So she took me to the studio and that's how it all started. So when you went to the studio, what was that experience like? Did you just go in there and was like, what the hell am I doing? No, so I wrote a few stuff before I went in. Mm -hmm. So I think I done a cover to like Rick Ross, Dice Pineapples. I done a cover that to- That nasty so you, <laughs> you was writing that <laughs> <laughs> And then I done a, I done a cover to um, Fabulous Gangster. These are still actually on, like you can find them on streaming platforms like they're on my SoundCloud. So, <laughs> under real rap, yeah. yeah. So you could still check it out. I sound like a baby, but mm -hmm. I did that. And obviously it cost and she was paying for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to waste time. So I went in prepared. Tell me, obviously being a woman in rap, yeah. I know it's hard. Like I've seen mm -hmm. so many interviews about like how you have to work twice as hard yeah. just to get half of what the men get. So what's kind of like been your experience with that? Yeah, it's quite difficult. I feel like sometimes as a female rapper, there's this type of, image you're supposed to fit into or notion like you gotta have big breasts, you gotta have big bum and everything's gotta be on point and it's like I don't know. Sometimes I feel the pressure but it's like I don't know is that is that the way I want to go? I want to also be me and I know there's a lot of girls that are like me that understand me so mm -hmm. it's very hard sometimes because you don't want to you want to be lit but you don't want to be what everyone expects of you. You don't want to be like everyone else. Yeah. Um, but I don't know why, as a girl, as a female rapper, you have to be perfect. The man them are doing videos, they even cut their hair. You look like you just come out the trap. But yeah, I have to be body on fleek, everything, Bang. stomach on flat, flat. Boy, like, what the hell? Thanks. <laughs> it's a lot. I've seen some treacherous, <laughs> treacherous music video. Like, as in, the music video looks dirty, mm. as in unhygienic, very scary. Yeah. But then it's like, when it comes to like female artists, you have to have production, hair, makeup. Dancing. Dances. Yeah. Dances, different scenes, you have to switch up what you're wearing. 
I'm Don't let sure. hair be out of place as well. These rappers will be that was same white t-shirt from the first minute to the last minute were tired. I personally feel like a lot, if not the majority of the female rappers out there can out rap a lot of them. I rappers. see it a lot of the time. When I watch a lot of girls, I'm like, you definitely are harder than this person, but this guy might do more numbers because he's a guy. Facts. Um, and it's unfortunate because we're a small percentage in the game, not even just female rappers. I feel like even maybe in the UK, female singers, rappers, producers, DJs, we make up 5% of the music industry. Five, but you're making the most noise though. Period. Period. Do you think? So speaking about making the most noise in the industry, yeah. how do you make sure that your voice is heard being a woman as well in this industry? It's hard sometimes as a woman. Yeah. Maybe we to just take you seriously uh, and listen to what you're saying. Back. I'm really good at not reacting. I'm going to say that's what I'm trying to give myself accolades for. Oh, that. I'm... <laughs> I, I hate you no don't even evil. exist. What the See hell? No evil. What did you say? Not there, baby Who girl. are you? Not Restricted. There. I don't even block. New. But I think I could be better with maybe speaking up. As much as I'm saying that, I do stand up for myself and I don't take... I, I don't take no... You know, Please. yeah, I don't think that'll be like so. I guess obviously, when you know what's good for you and and you know what decisions you want to make, just have to stand on it. I'm not in the game of taking things that are less than me or doing certain things because but, of whatever reason, yeah. I like to make sure I set my standards and I keep it. And yeah. even like being a black female in this industry, sometimes I feel like, say, for example, a guy was to come in late, yeah, it's calm, like, oh yeah, now obviously he just woke up. Girl was to come in late, she's a diva. Why are we being treated different just because we're women? So how do you like navigate around that? I feel like I'm only getting better now. I feel like I'm still not as demanding as I could be. And I'm all for making the work environment a nice place and a calm same, place, same. but I also still need what I need. Mm -hmm. um, and just like I said, standing up for myself and, and using my voice, like if I need something, I need something. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be open about it. Some of the nicest people or whatever, when it comes to business, they don't play. Fine. And, as you should, you shouldn't play. Like, get, do, get what you need to get and ask what you need to ask for. Yeah. So, with any artist in any genre, there's been, like, trial and error moments. Yeah. So, have you ever, like, gone in a direction that you really wanted to go down and it's just flopped? I feel like before I had a breakthrough record, that's how I felt every time. Really? Because I'm just like, yeah, you're looking for that song that's going to connect. Mm. Um, and I tried out loads of different stuff. I did grime, I've done proper hip hop. You was good, I've you was good house. at grime. Whoa. Yeah. Don't, don't, that's not a flop. Yeah, no. We can, never, <laughs> maybe, we can never say that was a flop now. But like, I just done loads of different songs. Like, mm. And what stuck for you, the Afro song? Yeah, like I feel like my first song to do a million streams was a song called Day Ones that I did in 2017, and yeah, that was like yeah. an Afro vibe. That music video was so sweet. Yeah, I feel like I kind of found my voice on them type of beats. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, this summer, I don't know how many festivals you performed at, but you, you was killing it. So many. And seeing you on stage, it's like you own that stage. And then yeah. you've got your dancers in the back. I was trying to steal her style and shit. Like, <laughs> your, the way you put your outfits together, but it's like, where do you get that confidence? I feel like I've always loved performing. Like, I always say, if you want to get to know me as an artist, you have to come see me live. But when I was younger, I always used to perform for my family. Yeah, same, but that's different. That's nah, Christmas, but... or oh, yeah, dance for your uncle. <laughs> no, but I, mean? I feel like my family had me doing it all the time. I used to love it. Like, I knew all the words to Monica, Usher, put long sleeve T-shirt on my head. You were singing I like it so songs weird. in front of your papa and your mama. <laughs> You know, my parents are really cool. <laughs> Let it play. They're quite young. <laughs> no, it wasn't even like, it's like, it's seven o'clock on the dot. I'm in my chapter, cruising the street. Period. Doom, 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 doom. Tell me what you want to do with me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. You mentioned before that you're an independent artist. Yeah. Can you explain to me, as someone that's not really in the music what industry... What it is to be. What it is to be independent and what it is to be with a label and what's the difference? Um, I feel like being independent, you're not signed to a major label. That's what it really is. So you don't really have that machine. Obviously, I have a great team. They got my team. Um, but a lot of artists that are not signed to major labels don't know what it takes to kind of get themselves more out there. Yeah. But I think being independent for my whole career, I've learned the components I need to kind of still grow you yeah. know, without a major label. So that's the only difference. Major label, obviously, have been around for years. They have experience, they have connections, they have a name that could help possibly propel you quicker and backing of like a big amount of money. It's not for everyone though. No. 
And do you find it really important to like own your own stuff? And your yeah, properties? I feel like um, it's been easier for me to make a living from what I do by owning my masters. Sick. Yeah. Talk to me about your vision for yourself in the future. Loads of stuff. I think world domination. Wow. <laughs> 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 definitely want to definitely want to dominate a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like. In the future, I could probably have my own label or some type of like management, like mogul business. Mm. Yeah. Because I feel like I've learned a lot. We had to like brag it a lot along the way, and I've learned a lot being an independent artist. And I kind of know what you need to do or what it takes to help a new artist. I feel like I could give a new artist now a lot of knowledge, which yeah. could help prepare their career yeah. faster. And yeah, I just want to find ways to give back to the community. Mm. Like I'm very passionate about like black people and mental health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and just giving back. So tell me, what are you? expecting from the next generation confidence yes bangers mm -hmm. chart positions domination mm -hmm. like you're just gonna do everything that we've done and more yeah that's the aim i feel like if the next generation doesn't then we haven't done what we're supposed to do mm -hmm. you know your success is supposed to make it easier for the next period and hopefully when they see you they feel even more inspired that like she could do it she made out the ends so i can exactly she bought her mama yard she done this yeah i can do it even though you know we could teach them a few things. They could probably teach us some things too. Hopefully it's easier for them than it was for us. I always think about the artists before me, like I know it was harder for them. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes that kind of keeps me grounded because I think, wow, well, they had to do the mad thing mm -hmm. to get that legendary status. So. Yeah. Okay, so this is one thing that scares me. And I was wondering if it scares you as well. But basically, I feel like the reason why I work so hard is because one day, like, no one's going to care about me. Like, no one's going to be checking for me. No one's going to be liking my pictures, watching my videos and stuff like that. So yeah. I always feel like I have to work extra, extra, extra hard to stay relevant. Yeah. So do you feel like that as well? I feel like it never really crossed my mind before until I saw things changing, like, with social media. Like, for instance, Instagram was just, like, acting up for a minute. And I was like, all of a sudden, my interactions were lower than usual. And I was like, oh, my God. Not once did it cross my mind that it might be the algorithm. I thought, oh, my God, people not interested in what I'm doing. They were like, what's going on? Yeah. It really was a A lot of people would be scared here. A lot of people would be scared here. I was like, what is going on? And then it kind of made me realise, no, you really have to capitalise on the moment because you don't know when you're going to be hot or not. Like, And the fact that the tools that you use can decide that for you is kind of scary. I know it's crazy, but obviously we're all human, but I don't feel like that could ever be reality for you. I feel like people that are supporters, you always have your tribe, like your core yeah, 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 fan base. Yeah. I feel like if we make the right moves now, that you could always be set no matter what. Mm. Are you going to tell me what's next for you, or do I have to, like, find so out? So I just dropped my EP not too long ago. Yes. Bank statement. Yeah, because we make statements. Yeah. So make sure you guys check that out. I feel like every step of the way, I'm thinking, how can I evolve? How can I do better? Mm. I'm grateful, but I'm never complacent. I've always felt like I've made noise internationally, but I want to kind of hone in on that a bit more. Like, I love the UK. It's my home, but mm. I feel like there's a whole world out there for me to see. Yeah. So I'm just going to spread my wings a little bit more. OK, so it was really, really nice catching up with you. I feel like I learned a bit more about my sister. Yeah. You know, I've been doing my digging now. I've dug enough. But yeah, I really enjoyed our conversation today. Thank babe. you. I enjoyed it too. Very lighthearted. The baddest bees link up per Tall Girls United. But guys, if you guys want to see more of JBL's Orange Box, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Big Per, Big Rose and Big Banks and that song. Period. <laughs> <laughs>